Hello and welcome. I'm Prasad Venkatachar, Senior Director, focused on products at solutions, products and solutions at Labs. Uh, in this uh, talk, I'm going to walk through the data protection and rapid recovery for federal scale de cloud deployments without any compromise. As part of the presentation, um, the topics for the the topics that consist is like you know the importance of data protection with a direct attached storage and the software de defined storage, the the best practices to consider for these application deployments, and some of the uh, performance and reliability testing we carried out with the MySQL, MongoDB, and MariaDB, uh, both in the direct attached and software uh, defined storage, and some of the customer uh, scenarios and the benefits they have realized uh, as part of uh, our engagement. So the data protection uh, is absolutely critical for whether you're using it for a direct attached storage or a distributed uh, software, uh, software defined storage, uh, because any um, loss of an SSD will have a significant impact on unprotected uh, database storage solution because all the users connected to the uh, application has to be migrated from, an, uh, from a connected instances in this case, 100 users, let's imagine 100 users connected to the MySQL application one, and these users has to be migrated onto uh, the secondary instance. So that is a significant uh, impact on all the users reconnecting to the uh, DR instance. And this problem will becomes even more uh, pronounced uh, because of in the, in the in case of a distributed storage, here instead of a 100 users here, uh, the distributed supports several different applications. In this uh, example, let's imagine application one, two, three, you have a 300 users connected to um, the application. All these 300 users has to be redirected to the, uh, the DR instances uh, to provide a, a good quality of service during the outage. So another factor that needs to be considered is on the, uh, the performance per terabyte scaling. As you see here, the capacities have been increasing from 1.9 terabyte to 15.36 terabyte. The capacity has increased by 8x, but the, however, the performance that is IAPS rating from this SSD capacity is from 810 for a 1.92 to 850K, which is only 40K of IAPS increase for a 8x amount of uh, capacity increase. Another factor which will become say, uh, takes a lot of importance is that when you are looking at a high density storage solution with the TLC, the cost becomes a very expensive solution. So to mitigate this, the alternate route, you know, we can take a, uh, you can explore is on using the QLC, but the performance uh, drops to a significantly lower level. So given this, one and high performance and expensive solution versus high capacity economical solution. So how do we balance this uh, both given this, right? So, and other factors, uh, some of the best practices that needs to be taken into consideration on uh, deploying in applications with the direct attached storage and software uh, software defense storage uh, fundamentally boils down to four important aspects. One is to make sure we get a deliver, um, get a, a sustained performance across various block sedges, uh, whether it is 8K or 16K. And the, in the event of outage, the recovery, uh, the duration has to be kept minimal and the performance during this outage, the, um, during the outage uh, should conform to the SLS, the user SLS, uh, which is signed up. And the, there has to be a absolutely zero or minimum data loss. Uh, and finally, uh, the capacity and cost is another important factor that will help to make sure that the, in the event of an outage, the number of capacity exposed supports, still supports the given uh, user capacity and the application capacity required. And overall cost of the solution is another important factor that needs to be taken into consideration. So to uh, assess the benefits of the performance and reliability, uh, we carried out a eight instance of MariaDB. Uh, running a sysbench TPCC workload. And we picked a three different storage configuration, one with the running with a RAID 5, uh, where you have a built-in data protection, another with a RAID 0, you get a highest performance, but no data protection. 
And third one is the PLAPS DFP, that is data file, uh, dry file protection. So when we ran this um, uh, Sysbench TPCC with the, the baseline software rate file was driving around 25,000 uh, queries per second, as you see is in this chart uh, with a normal uh, scenario where all the SSDs were performing. Uh, with all the SSDs were connected. And then um, with the software rate zero, the, um, uh, the performance has jumped from 25,000 to 50,000 queries per second, uh, almost 2x gain. Uh, however, in the software rate five, when we simulated uh, pulling an SSD from a RAID group and creating a crash, then uh, the performance of the software RAID 5 drops from 25,000 to 5,000 queries per second. That's almost 5x drop. And software RAID 0 doesn't have a data protection. We couldn't uh, create any SSD crash. However, with the PLAPS uh, dry fail protection enabled, uh, the sustained performance around 125,000 queries per second. And when we pulled an SSD out of the RAID configuration, the performance drop was from 125,000 queries per second drop to 100,000 queries. So there is around 15 to 20% drop in performance. However, the drop in performance, uh, this performance uh, during these uh, recovery operations, the performance um, when compared to the software RAID 0 without no data protection has still 2x higher than that of the uh, RAID 0 performance. So what we were able to assess is like uh, with a normal sustained performance, we get around 2.5x higher performance that of the software rate zero. And during the, um, the recovery operations with the dry fail protection for with the ply up scenario, we get 2x higher performance that of the software rate zero. And we were working with the customers, they had a, something similar in situations where they wanted to, for a business requirement, they had to consider a design trade-off, going for a high performance and uh, exposing higher capacity versus the uh, considering the high resiliency. And the resiliency they were able to provide through a, a, an asynchronous replication with the MariaDB, failing over all the primary instance to stand by with, uh, and thereby addressing the RPOs and uh, RPO requirements. Here is a deep dive of the customer scenario. They were using two 15.84 terabyte of SSDs in a RAID zero. And the objective was to provide expose more capacity. And um, uh, they had a, a designed a very good uh, database uh, solution where the fault domains is completely isolated for each user uh, logging into this, uh, their customer applications where they get a dedicated MariaDB instance, thereby any rogue user or a rogue query will not impacting or failing over the, all the MariaDB instance from a primary to secondary. Uh, however, uh, the, this fault domain isolation was done in only in the database tier, but on the storage tier, loss of any SSD or losing an SSD will trigger all the user MariaDB instances failing over from a primary onto the uh, the standby instance. So that is caused a significant uh, uh, increase the blast radius to a significant and also all the user reconnections. So when we work with these customers to evaluate the PLAPS dry fail protection, so they were able to the, uh, realize the performance, not only the performance benefit um, improved, right, where uh, and the second factor is the, the blast radius is uh, much more contained and minimum and restricted or confined to only the primary environment. So losing an SSD, it will not trigger entire MariaDB instances to failing out to the secondary. And the second factor is in the performance during the rebuild is much higher than that of the, what they were able to see it in the baseline performance with all the SSDs being functioning. So this helped them to provide enough confidence to increase the number of SSDs from two SSDs to four SSDs, and the fact that we provide an inline data protection, the capacity, uh, in ca uh, total capacity per node increased from 21 terabyte to 66 terabyte. Looking this at a bigger data center level, at a rack level, so here, um, so 15, 21 terabyte uh, on a current scenario to be 66 terabyte, that is almost 3.2x higher capacity, uh, and the cost TCO per terabyte 
uh, as reduced to 58%. And the fact that uh, we mitigated uh, for a large, uh, you know, they, they had a 10,000 odd servers, which is had close to 600 server uh, failures because of an SSD outage. And because of that, they had a, uh, we completely mitigated that, that will reduce that into a zero as, uh, SSD related failures. And that not only minimize the number of failures, but also the improved customer experience and the satisfaction to a greater extent. And other factor is the fact that we are able to store more uh, capacity and the fact that to drive more performance, they're able to increase the MariaDB instances of 15 uh, user instances to uh, 20 user instances. So that is like almost like a 33% uh, increase in multi-tenancy database benefits. Uh, we also evaluated how does the MongoDB performance and reliability testing using the YCSD. And uh, when we are comparing this with the software baseline, MongoDB users say, uh, recommends using a rate 10 configuration uh, with uh, the default it uses a snappy compression. And when we run this with a, a YCSDA, which is a write heavy workload, the, the software baseline was 30,000 uh, operations per second with the snappy compression. And the same thing, PLAPS uh, dry file protection enabled, which is we got around 72,000 72, uh, operations per second. That is almost a 2.3x increase in the performance. And when we measured the latency, the baseline was 4,000 microsecond, and that got reduced to 1,600 microsecond. That's almost 2.4x uh, reduction in the latency. And like uh, MariaDB, we also simulated, we wanted to find out how is the reliability of my MongoDB instance in the event of an SSD failure. And this uh, uh, diagram exactly illustrates that. So when during the normal operations, we were getting around 80,000, 85,000 uh, operations per second, and we simulated, pulled out an SSD and the performance drop and let that SSD be, uh, let the, the operations to be running like in you know, a YCSDA, all the mixed work workload was running during this duration. And we, as we see the performance drop is uh, reduced to minimal and at this stage, we initiated a, after one hour, we initiated a recovery. And during that thing, the performance drop, we observed the performance drop from the peak is, is still within the 15 to 20% of the, the peak performance. And the recovery operations has been completed in a one hour period uh, and complete SSD is being part of the, the RAID group. And uh, the, the SSD, I mean, the performance is back to normal after the SSD recovery operation is completed. So um, we had another customer where we, they wanted to assess because they had uh, uh, wanted to have a increased reliability and uh, also performance. There they wanted to have a two SSD failures uh, being tested. At the same time, they wanted to understand how the, the performance looks like. So here we tested uh, their requirement. They were running in eight, uh, I mean, they were running MySQL, and, uh, MySQL instances. We, sim uh, we set up the same eight, mines, uh, eight instance of MySQL with an increased data protection. Um, so what we uh, what is that increased data protection is the PLATS provides an, an option called a virtual hard capacity. It's a part of the overall uh, SSD working group. As you see here, the total devices is five, five working SSD, a virtual hard capacity. It's spread across all the available SSD groups. And when we compare with a, a software baseline with a rate zero uh, comparison, we were able to see 2.5x uh, performance benefit uh, from 68K operations per second increase to 126K uh, queries per second. Then when we created an SSD crash, so the virtual hard capacity that is distributed across all the available group became zero. I mean, you know, that it became a failed device uh, SSD and the rebuild operations kicks in. And we, then we assess the performance during the rebuild. And this is still uh, 2X higher performance than that of the baseline work we were mentioning. So what it also demonstrates, whether it is a MariaDB, my MongoDB or in the MySQL, we're able to see the, the performance during the rebuild is much, much higher, almost two orders of 2x, uh, 2x higher than that of the 
the baseline what we are able to see with the uh, standard uh, eight zero setup. So uh, this is another uh, right, like you know. So the way uh, the plaps rifle protection uh, helps to provide increased data protection. One, it can tolerate two sequential SSD failures. So thereby, the user will not experience any uh, in any capacity drop or any impact. The second is uh, we accelerate the rebuild and recovery operations faster, and thereby uh, because the fact that we rebuild only the used capacity, not the entire actual capacity, that helps to uh, accelerate the recovery and the rebuild operations. Uh, so with the plaps, uh, uh, this customer able to see an increased. Um, uh, uh, increased resiliency for a fault and enable a fault tolerant uh, primary database. And uh, that also helped to improve the customer experience and the SLA compliance they had. And also the fact that um, uh, uh, they are able to increase uh, with a uh, tolerate around two sequential uh, SSD failures. So, and reduce the any for um, the, the primary instance failing over. And that in the event of an ASSD failure, the standby instance will be quickly become turned to uh, become an active. And because the fact that uh, all these, uh, the replication loss will get applied on the standby much quicker and thereby uh, it increases the, the, the quicker recovery operations and uh, increases the uptime of the overall instance. We also assessed like how is the performance reliability with the basic uh, FIO testing and comparing against a hardware rate file across both the read and write operations. And um, that is sustained performance. We observed 11X performance, higher performance that compared to the hardware rate file. And when we compared during the soft, uh, FIO performance, during the rebuild operation, losing an SSD, there here we saw a uh, 12X performance benefit compared to the existing hardware, uh, hardware rate file scenario. Uh, a customer that we are working another is in a large hyperscaler customer. They had a uh, elastic uh, block storage equivalent. They had a, a cluster file system, which had a 10 plus two configuration. That, what does it mean? 10 data nodes and two erasure code nodes. That equivalence translates into 20% of server uh, tolerance rate for the failures. And uh, at the SSDs, each SSDs had uh, 24 SSDs. That means two servers out of the uh, dedicated for the erasure coding, that is 48 SSDs out of the total 264 that translate to 17% per cluster for the SSD failure tolerance. So they had to take into consideration from the design consideration is quality of service during the failure and the cluster rebalance time in the event of an SSD, it has to uh, you know rebalance between uh, all the available 12 nodes in the uh, configuration and uh, the traffic in the networking, uh, the network ports and uh, uh, the traffic that goes between the east-west uh, during that outage and the amount of CPU that has to be factored in for rebalancing. So if any of these things doesn't meet, they have to take care of the SLA compliance with the free cloud credits. So when they evaluated with the uh, PLAPs, with the architectural benefits they're able to realize is immense because PLAPS provides an additional resilience layer at the server level with a, uh, an SSD ability to tolerate the three SSDs uh, per each server out of the 22 SSDs that we saw for in the each server. So that means a 40%, 14% uh, higher SSD tolerance uh, per, each, uh, S per each server. So what does it mean is, uh, the cluster level uh, losing an SSD will not kick in a cluster level rebalancing at the, uh, unless uh, the local level, server level SSD failure uh, rebalancing is not taken care or this will not be addressed, like then only the cluster level will be taken, uh, uh, will not kick in. So what they were able to realize is uh, one, uh, they got a fact that we are able to increase the storage density going from a TLC SSDs with 7.6 to 15.36 uh, uh, QLC SSD. Uh, and uh, in, with the line rate uh, in compression, the capacity increased from uh, 1.5 petabyte per storage part to 4.3 petabyte uh, with uh, almost 3x higher storage density. And this reduced the 66% TCO per terabyte. And uh, 
um, the fact that like, you know, so we provide a writing all the random writes into sequential write that improved the SSD endurance by 1.5x. And the fact that we are able to isolate, uh, introduce additional written uh, resiliency layer. So they provide an another FTT one plus configuration. Uh, to wrap up my presentation, the summary of the benefits of uh, looking into a data protection and rapid recovery is, um, so if you're running into a performance scaling, IOPS per terabyte, so this solution enabled to uh, increase a linear performance scaling with IOPS per uh, terabyte. And uh, the, fault, uh, the blast radius or a fault domains is minimized to a larger extent and the performance uh, dropped during the uh, rebuild operations kept to very minimal. And we also accelerate uh, customers, many, all the customers are able to see the rebuild operations is, uh, you know, reduced to drastically reduce the rebuild and recovery operations. And um, finally, the hot space, uh, if you're looking at this, this will using a virtual hot capacity, uh, it will help to increase the, uh, the increased reliability. And the fact that there is no, a, uh, the hot, uh, hot spare SSDs is part of the RAID group. So thereby uh, it not only becomes a, provides a higher performance, also the capacity is factored. So there is no additional uh, administrative overhead required with the hot spare. With that said, thank you for taking to, time to listen to my presentation. Please take time to rate my presentation. Look forward to your feedback. Thank you.